We are going to do some work today. I want to hit something that uh, by the spirit that we need to address. And we all come in contact with this spirit often and probably don't even know it. We kind of normalize it, but we are not going to normalize it after Pentecost. We're, we're going to hit this spirit. It is the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Grab your books. Uh, Living with the Advantage, if you don't have it, go to Amazon.com and get it. God bless you. And go. Um, we're going to really deal with this uh, spirit and how God has given us victory over this spirit when we understand the indwelling and overpowering presence of Holy Spirit in our lives. Father, we thank you for a new week. We thank you, God, for lessons and downloads that come from your spirit. We thank you that Jesus is glorified and demons are horrified in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your spirit Spirit fall upon us. Let your spirit fall upon us. Good morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Hey, Shanda Oshka, Lynn Crooms, God bless you, Pearl Evans, Pastor Gerald Folsom, Brenda Ann Brown. Let's go. Let's go. Demetrius, good morning, my elder. Good morning, Linda Omer Taylor. Make sure that you have this book, Living with the Advantage. And don't just have it, read it. This book will give you a solid foundation for understanding how to successfully navigate life how to live with the competitive edge as Holy Spirit becomes your best friend. I won't take it back. <laughs> as the young people say, before I take it back, I'll add more to it. Overseer, get your folks in here. Sharon Brown Hill, good morning. Hey, Myesha Monterey Peters, Pat, Dr. Martha Boggs, good morning. Pastor Staples, good morning. Hey, Shaba, Cedric Brown. Good morning, son. Hey, Brittany Christian. Let's go. Vanita, let's go. Reba Manioshe. Hande Babasi. Linda Almer Taylor says, my, oh my God. Wow. All right. Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Good morning, Sandra Singleton. My God, that girl. We go way back. We fought a lot of battles together. Get this book. Living with the Advantage. Order it immediately. Go to our website, www.gotellit.org. Go to the website. If you want me to sign it, put that in the in the uh, order. Have Bishop sign it. We'll send you a signed copy. But don't just order the book. Read the book. <laughs> Janet Rivers Richardson. Amen. Hallelujah. We are living with the advantage. Facebook user, God bless you. Hallelujah. We are living with the advantage. How to successfully navigate life. This is probably one of the most common ways that portals are open in our lives. This is one of the most common ways. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dr. Skimmer said the book is great. I broaden my understanding of Holy Spirit. This is one of the most common ways that portals get opened. This is one of the most common ways. I know we talk a lot about, you know, adultery and fornication and sexual sin, lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping. Gambling, we, we talk a lot about that. And of course, sin or iniquity or disobedience, uh, it, it attracts other spirits. But I, I, I want you to deal with this. We're going to hit this one. But I'm going to suggest to us 
that the spirit of fear is usually the first one that opens the portals because it starts in childhood. I can remember as a, as a child, uh, Deborah Watts, good morning, Victoria Felder. Come on in here, Alfred Benyard, Kathy Chisley, Naomi Ennis, good morning, M Mama Pearl, God bless you. Come on, Heidi, let's go, Lynn Crooms, Melissa Quirk, Doretha Bailey, hallelujah, glory to God. Come on, Vandela, let's go, Wendy, Wendy, Sissy, let's go. The spirit of fear. I'm going to suggest to you of any kind, anxiety, stress, fear, anything that feels like that, because anxiety is just another form of fear. And usually the spirit of fear is the first one that we come in contact, and most times without even knowing it. Without even knowing it, Pastor John Davis, Juliet, Dr. J, Sylvia Spikes, without even as a child, we come in contact with this spirit. If you get anxious about anything, listen to me carefully, that is the spirit of fear. If you have any anxiety, if you have anything that causes you to, you know, to, to be stressed or uh, overwhelmed, that's the spirit of fear. That's the spirit of fear. Paul says to us in Philippians chapter number four, do not be anxious about anything. Ooh. <laughs> do not be anxious about anything. Now we can stop right here and repent. Do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and petition or supplication and that with thanksgiving, we present our request to God and the peace of God. <laughs> Woo, glory to God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians chapter number four, verse six and seven. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that Poliate says, the spirit of fear is being embraced by children even on today. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. People are moving their children toward fear. Towards fear. Halloween can be whatever you make it. You can make it evil, wicked, or you can make it good and pleasant. Just depends on who you are and how you were raised. I want us to understand that the spirit of fear is very, very, very serious. Very, very serious. And the spirit of fear is tormenting. It torments us. It torments us. It does not bring us joy or peace or anything. And so when we are anxious about anything, about anything, we are being oppressed by the spirit of fear. Oh my God, look at this. The prophet of the Lord says, fear and anxiety try to attack me yesterday, I bind that demon. I had to recognize it and hear the Holy Spirit. Woo, come on now, come on. The spirit of fear is tormenting and it can be so uh, 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 unaware. You can be so unaware of it. You can be so unaware of it. You don't even know sometimes what you are fighting. You don't even know 
sometimes that it is the spirit of fear. Monica brings up a good point. Thank you, Monica. She said the spirit of fear and anxiety is one of those spirits that is transferred through the placenta from a mother to the child because our young children are manifesting this thing in extreme high numbers. When you, when you speak to them, they don't even know why or what they're afraid of. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fear is very deceptive. Fear, false evidence appearing real. Somebody put that in the chat. False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. <laughs> Good morning, Brother Phil. Good morning. Come on. We, we, we in this lesson. Let's go. Chris, Chris. Good morning. Juanita Campbell. The spirit of fear. If there is any anxiety, any stress, if there, watch this, is the absence of peace. So let's just move it to this. The absence of peace. If you don't have peace in it, if there is no peace, I, I know we think that the opposite of peace is calm, but it's not. It's usually fear. It's usually fear. And it doesn't have to be fear of anything evil. It can be fear of flying. It can be fear of going to school. It can be fear of taking an exam. It can be fear of getting married. It can be fear of commitment. It can be fear of success. I'm not talking about the fear or reverence of God, but a fear like, like you're really afraid of God. The absence of peace is an indicator that fear is nearby, crouching at your door. <laughs> Woo, men's hearts are failing them. Because they see things happening on earth. Thank God for the Holy Ghost in our lives. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Ooh, the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Anxiety. The absence of peace. Watch this, Naomi. Fear of being lost. Absolutely. <laughs> Woo. Elder Nettie, ha, yes, come on, fear. Fear is torment. Good morning, Dr. Thea, the fear. Fear of being someone in your home. Thank you, Leonardo. Fear of going out witnessing. The fear of, uh, of, of, of strangers. I, I want us to know how we have normalized fear. Normalize fear. How we have made fear normal. Fear is not normal. Woo. The absence of peace. Mother Mary Ann Davis, the absence of peace. Fear of rejection. Come on here, Rita. Come on. Fear of swimming. Fear of water. Fear of elevators. Come on, let's go, let's go. Fear of crowds. Fear of COVID, fear of death. <laughs> fear of traveling, wow, wow. <laughs> fear of the unknown. Uh, 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 I, I, I minister to people all over the world and people say, fear is fear. And I say, what are you afraid of? I don't know. It's just, I'm just fearful. Wow. Dr. Bradford, good morning. Fear is not normal. Some people have the fear of success. Fear is not normal. It is a very unhealthy emotion. And it is normally the door opener to any portal 
or to every other portal that will open to other oppression, to other demonic invasion. And I'm sick and tired of the saints acting like there are no demons. I'm sick and tired of the saints acting like you are not in a battle. I'm sick and tired of the church smoothing over and covering over these demonic spirits that are attacking the saints. I'm sick and tired of us acting like we're not fighting. We're not soldiers. We're not in a battle. I'm sick and tired of us acting like we don't have an enemy. I'm sick and tired of the church of Jesus Christ giving permission to demonic spirits to oppress the saints because we don't confront it. I am sick and tired of it. Spirit of infirmity, things you can never get well from it. Doctor can't find nothing. And you just on all kinds of medicines and you don't even know what's wrong with you. Come on now, we're acting like there's no demonic oppression in the earth realm, panic attacks. People having anxiety attacks and we're just glossing over it. No, no, no. We have got to stop acting as if we have no help. We got to stop acting as if we are not in a position of war. Mental torment. Mental, Monica, we are in a war, folks. And we are acting as if there is no enemy. There is an enemy to the saints. There is an enemy to you. And you cannot normalize this stuff, Glennis. You cannot, you cannot normalize fear. You cannot normalize anxiety. Ooh, Dr. Patricia James says, I had to go to a place that I took on the spirit of fear as I recognized God didn't give it to me. And deliverance came through the Holy Spirit. As I released fear in that area, carried it from the age of 13, probably even before that. That's just the moment that you recognize. Come on, now we are, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this wishy-washy, lukewarm, uh, uh, syrupy church. We are supposed to be training warriors. We're supposed to be training soldiers how to do battle, how to, how to overcome and, and successfully navigate your life. We're acting like, oh, ain't nothing wrong. There's a lot wrong. It wasn't wrong. He wouldn't have given us his spirit. I've never been a person that I thought had fear. And I had certain things that, you know, I said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm fear flying, never, you know. But, you know, swimming and water and all of that sometimes would just, you know, just, uh, uh, um, you know, get get in my, in my, you know, I just normalized it, just normalized it. And we're so asleep and we're so comfortable in Zion. You know, we're so, we're so at ease that we have, we have forgotten that we are in war. We have forgotten that we're supposed to be training for battle. We have forgotten that we are supposed to be in this thing, fighting principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness. We've forgotten. We just take everything like, oh, well, you know, that's just the way I am or that's the way. No, some of you are paranoid. 
Somebody's always after you. Somebody's out to get you. Somebody's trying to kill you. Somebody paranoid. Paranoia is fear. Oh, come on, Heidi. Look at this. So we have to stop combating the spiritual battles with worldly means, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just, you know, we 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 smoke a little something and eat a little something and drink a little something, you know, calm us down. Some of you say you smoke cigarettes because it calms your nerves. Some of us eat because it just calms me down. Comfort food. <laughs> that devil. I know that devil. <laughs> so some of us got, you know, just come in for work and, you know, we first thing we do, we got to, you know, take something to, you know, a little oil, CBD, a little, you know, come on, all of this to calm us down and to, and to get us uh, 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 seduced and all right with, with all of those emotions that we never get to the root of why they're there. And so we, we, we are in a space where now if the church doesn't teach you, you got to learn. That's why I'm here. God always has people that would teach you. So you can win. So you can win in life. Glory to God. Oh, and we just, we're just walking around, you know, who, oh, I just got to, whoo, child, I was, who I had to relax. I had to, who I had to go outside and smoke a cigarette. And, whoo, I had to, what? What? And then we have uh, fear as a child, fear of, a high, fear of heights. Yes, fear of crossing bridges. Yes, fear of caskets, funerals, dead things. Thank you, Dr. J. Woo, fear of being alone. Fear of being in your room by yourself without a light on. Some of you can't even sleep without a TV. You got to have noise. I got to have noise on. Why? I can't sleep without noise. Really? That is the spirit of fear. And it's so normalized in our culture. It's so normalized that we have forgotten about being soldiers in the army of the Lord. We have forgotten that we have been given the tools of war. Now, Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I want to deal with this because he has anointed me, Holy Spirit has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Get your paper Bibles. I'm in Luke chapter four, verse 18. Holy Spirit has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And here, I want to I want to get to this right here. To proclaim liberty to the captives. I want to get there, right there. Ooh, oh, come on, Kimberly. Wow, wow. Holy Spirit just called it out. I don't know. I don't know. Wow, that's the spirit of fear. Got to have a light on. Got to have noise on. Don't like riding roller coasters. Don't like going in airplanes. Deadly, deadly afraid of cars. I have people that can't ride in a car. I have other people that I know that can't be in crowds. Who I just can't be in crowds. <laughs> we have normalized it, folks. Now watch this. The spirit of the Lord has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. I'm in Luke chapter number four, where Jesus makes this huge proclamation about Holy Spirit anointing him to take care of some things. Watch this. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives recovery of sight to the blind, but I want you to get to this, and to set at liberty those that are oppressed. 
Now we've normalized being oppressed. Just like uh, we've normalized being sick. We've normalized being in pain. We've normalized not being able to sleep. Insomnia. We have normalized oppression. Somebody write that down. We have normalized oppression. Dr. Hope, we have normalized. Normalized. <laughs> I don't ride roller coasters. I, I don't ride this. I, I don't ride planes. I, I don't ride any. Listen, we've normalized oppression. Oh, child, I don't trust men. Oh, I don't trust women. I probably never will get married. I probably never will find a woman for me. I probably never will meet a man that I trust. I don't trust. Do we realize that that is the spirit of fear? And we have normalized, Dr. Hyman, oppression. Oh, I'm teaching. I got the doc on now. I ain't playing. Help me, doc. I, we have normalized oppression. We have normalized trauma. We have normalized our preferences. We have normalized being sick. We've normalized being single. We've normalized all of this that's in our culture. Well, you know, I'm saved and sanctified. You know, don't a man want to be bothered? The devil is a liar. You're normalizing fear. The fear of not getting married. The fear you've normalized. And so because you normalize it, you've learned to live in fear. You've normalized. Ooh, Rabbi Ki Eshkate. Ooh, ba, 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 she. You've normalized our oppression. And the church, oh my God, the church of Jesus Christ is now screaming mental illness, mental illness, mental illness. The church of Jesus Christ is now saying mental illness, mental illness. Come on. Whereas the church of Pentecost would cry deliverance, cast that devil out. But the church, today's church, today's culturally uh, a normal, politically correct church is saying mental illness, support groups. Come on. Ooh, I feel God here. That's the church of today. The 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 go with the culture church, and we're we're normalizing. We have normalized it. Dr. Hope says when I was 13 to 17 years old, my God, I was afraid of Caucasian people. I would have anxiety. Ooh, wow, 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 wow. Woo, that's coming from somewhere. That's coming from somewhere. That's ruining us somewhere. Listen. And our lenses, how we, I'm afraid of black people. I'm afraid of white people. I'm afraid of Hispanics. I'm a, you know, I just don't like to be in a crowd with a bunch of black people. Yeah, you know, I just don't like to be in a crowd with, you know, with, with white people. Listen to us. Listen to what we've normalized. We have normalized oppression. Oh my God, and don't, don't try to touch it. Don't, don't, don't try. Don't let nobody bring it to your attention. You will defend it to the death. You'll be, uh-uh, that ain't, uh-uh, no. You know, I just, I just satisfied with the Lord and you are lie. You are lie. You are lie. It's not how God made us. You have to normalize that. You have to normalize. I don't want to be with anybody. You have to normalize. I, I, you have to, you have normalized that. 
You've normalized same-sex attraction. You've normalized that. Oh, come on. Oh, did I say that? Holy Spirit, you've normalized it. You've normalized your oppression. You normalize your rebellion. You normalize it. Oh, you know, I just, I, you know, I just, uh-uh, no, no, and no. Oh, shaky, and that's just the way I am. How God made the devil is alike. Jesus came by the Spirit to set at liberty those that are oppressed. I want to deal with what is oppression. What is oppression? Oppression is a heaviness. Oppression is a heaviness that is put on people. A device to keep you from thriving. It can be put on you by a spirit. It can be put on you by person. It can be put on you by religion and institution. But it is intended to keep you from thriving. Oh, I'm teaching. I'm teaching. Come on, Instagram. Get with me. Y'all joining. Come on, join. Tell somebody, get on this. Ooh, Rabbi Kyle, look at this. I don't need friends. What? So that's the, that's a fear. That's a fear of rejection. We have normalized abnormal. We have normalized our trauma. We have normalized that 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 we are oppressed. We have normalized. <laughs> Notice what this says. And he closed the book, verse twenty of Luke four, gave it back to the attendant. And sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he said to them, verse 21, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Wow. Woo, come on, come on. Woo, rabaki and rabo oshkete. Woo, rabababababama shekete Ba, 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 ba. Listen to this. Listen to this. She says, I was on a phone for hours while a person was spewing all the way she is suffering illness, rebellion from her children, and all kinds of negative mm, demons, demons, Benita, demons, demonic spirits. We've normalized this stuff. We've normalized. We have normalized it. We act as if it's not done. And this is 2,000 years ago, before the Holy Spirit came, that this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to set at liberty those that are oppressed. Whoa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh God, hear my money. Woo, shake he Woo, glory, glory. And he closed the book. Now, watch this. When all of these oppressive uh, behaviors are manifesting, it is so common. It is so common that we began to think that's the benchmark. We almost get to the place where we say, if someone is totally free and totally delivered, something wrong with them. <laughs> Woo, Rabbi Ki, I need a more Therapy, yeah, there, but therapy don't cast out a demon. Therapy, yeah, Baba Niosha. Oh, Baba 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 Sheka. God, I give you glory. Listen, Dr. Aquas said, I had a young lady ask me for a ride the other day. Her cart broken down. 
She said she was scared to ask uh, any stranger, uh, a white, listen, we got all of this in us and it's all around us. And the church of Jesus Christ has lost her commanding edge with deliverance. And the reason that we don't have deliverance in our churches is because we have minimized the ministry of deliverance. We have minimized the ministry of casting out devils. Yes, I said it. We have minimized it. We have, we have accentuated lights, camera, action, worship, preaching, but we have minimized deliverance. We have minimized the working of Holy Spirit to cast out devils. Oh my God, my God, we have minimized. And so the spirit of fear, the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of trauma, the spirit of oppression is around the necks of the saints. It's on our children. And I mean, at an early age, if you say, hey, they turn and look and jump, the spirit of fear. We've come to a place where we have minimized. When you minimize the work of Holy Spirit, when you minimize the ministry of the fivefold, when you minimize speaking in tongues, casting out devils. Oh my God, we have minimized what freedom should be in the house of God. We have minimized deliverance to the oppressed. They're not just sick. They don't just need to go to a therapist. They need us to recognize that there are portals open and recognize that we have the power to deliver them and to close those portals. Oh, Rabbi Kashke. Ooh, we are we are living with demons and accepting their presence. We have made them our companions. <laughs> Ooh, Rabbi Kishé, listen to me. I remember coming through the ranks with Mother Boy. And baby, before you became a daughter of Zion, you had to know how to cast out devils. You had to know what purging looked like. You had to know how to stop a demon from ripping a person's body apart. You had to know how to clean up after demons. You had to know how to cover the congregation while deliverance was going on. When we when I came through that, I didn't learn that in my old church, my good church. Even now where, I, where I'm pastoring, I didn't learn that. At the Green Grove Missionary Baptist Church number two. I didn't learn that, but I had a desire. And God kept opening doors. God kept opening doors. Oh, Rabbi Ki Ashka. <laughs> and when I got in there and I began to see how these people had deliverance on their life, they had, I said, I want that. I want that. I want that. I want to know that. And you could not be a mother, a daughter of Zion, and you didn't know how to cast out a demon. You didn't know how to discern it and call it by name. What? What? Whoa, oh, no, 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 no. You couldn't wear that hanky and didn't know how to uh, see a spirit of infirmity on a person and see a spirit of fear. You had to know how to discern these spirits. And that comes by the baptism with Holy Spirit. Spirit baptism opens that realm, opens your eyes to see that we got to stop preaching over demons. Some people, they, they get happy in church and they shout because they don't want you to see that demon. They ain't that happy. They living with oppression. But that's a diversion so that the real true apostles and prophets won't call that demon out. Come on now. Many of you are sad because you're alone. You are sad because you're not dating. And you should be. You are sad. But listen to me. You have got to close the portal of fear. 
I, I ain't going out with nobody. I don't trust nobody. And these men out here now, nah, these women out here now, nah. listen, that's the spirit of fear. To keep a families, to oppress so that there will be no families, so that there will be no children. And when we started working that altar, yes, ma'am, Paula, when we started working that altar, we had to know how to discern. We had to know because we had to back up whoever was running that service. And you had to, you didn't have no unclean people up there at that altar. You didn't have no people smoking and drinking and lying up at that altar. Oh, no. You had to be pure to work that altar because you never knew when a demon or when a spirit of oppression of some kind was going to manifest. We do a lot of preaching with no signs and wonders. We do a lot of talking without manifestation of miracles. We do a lot of preaching. We have focused so on preaching that we have missed the deliverance that comes with preaching. Ooh, Rabbi Kishkoto. Ooh, we had to learn it. We had to learn how to cast out demons. Many of you are living in isolation. Listen to me carefully. Isolation. You're living in isolation. You come out to go to work or you come out to go to the grocery store, but you have made isolation normal. I'm just an introvert. You're a line one, the devil. I ain't no introvert. I ain't no extrovert. I'm born again, blood bought, redeemed, and spirit filled. The devil is a liar. Stop owning labels. Stop calling yourself by sociological labels. Stop putting labels around you. Labels are for jars. Labels are not for people. Don't let sociology, don't let the cultural anthropology, psychological, don't you let those things put labels. The devil is a liar. You are all made in the image and likeness of God. We are made in the Imago day. Don't come up in here with that foolishness. The devil is a liar. I am redeemed, blood bought, spirit filled. I can train myself to be extra or intro. I have a brain. I have a will. I have a spirit. I live in a body. The devil is a liar. You've owned this stuff. You've taken ownership of this. Labels are not for people. Labels are for jars. No, sir. No, sir. I have come to set at liberty those that are oppressed. Pastor Blocker, I am gay. I am this. I am that. You, what? You don't realize? That that's oppression. That's the spirit of fear. Let's 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 get, let's get on down into this. Let's 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 get down into this. Ooh, let's 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 drill ourselves down in that. Now, I want to go over. I dealt with Philippians chapter number four about anxiety, and I want you to see. Of course, we all know this particular scripture because. This is probably one of the most famous scriptures when it comes uh, to the spirit of fear. So let's run over to Timothy. Let's run over to Timothy. And many of us know this. This is the first uh, pastoral, if you will. We call them the pastoral epistles. So let's run over to Timothy. There's Timothy 1. Timothy 2, and then there's Titus, and we call those the pastoral epistles. So let's run over uh, to the pastoral epistle of, uh, let's go to 2 Timothy, praise God, and we're going to deal with uh, this from verse 3, chapter 1, verse 3. Paul says, I thank God in whom I've served for the pure conscience as my forefathers did. As without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers day and night, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. Now watch this. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, 
and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Now, this letter from Paul comes as a epistle of encouragement. This, this, this is from prison as Paul is imprisoned and this is probably going to be the latter times of his life. But he is assuring Timothy, he's heard some things about how the church at Ephesus is treating him. Maybe Timothy even wrote him, we don't know. But Paul responds with this letter to encourage him, to assure him that his age is not an issue, to encourage him that the people that are not treating him well uh, are not in power to derail his purpose or to derail his destiny. Uh, Paul is teaching this young young son of his that the attacks of people around him should not make him fearful or cause him anxiety. <laughs> All right? So I want you to catch a hold of this. Hallelujah. Because when you catch a hold of this, you'll understand how the statement of God has not given you the spirit of fear comes up. Timothy has been assigned by Paul as a young apostle to pastor and shepherd the church at Ephesus. Everybody there is older. Everybody there is more mature. But yet, Paul has assigned him to teach and preach and pastor in this church. He, he pulls on the lineage of faith. He reminds him that you have not just started this journey, but that your mother and your grandmother's faith is also in you. Now, he says, now stir up your gifts. Don't become oppressed. Don't get under the weather. Don't get down and out. Stir up your gifts. Now, how do you stir them up? By using them. You stir your gifts up by using them. If you are brought, you have the gift of prophecy, start prophesying. If you have the gifts of healing manifested, start healing. That's how you stir them up. So get back to doing what I know you can do. And I know you can do it because I laid my hands on you. So what was in me and in your mother and in your grandmother is now in you. Now stir it up, stir it up. Those people are not in charge of you. Those people don't have control over you. Don't you be afraid and run off of your assignment. Don't let them run you away because what is in you is now what they need. So fight back, stir up your gifts, get your gifts working again. Fan the flames of your anointings. You've been down in that space too long. You're listening to what they're saying. You're listening to how they're talking about you. You're too busy trying to find out who said what and who said that and why they said this and what they're going to do to you and how they're going to get you. You need to get your ears out of that and stir up your gifts and the flames of your anointings because God has not given you a spirit of fear. <laughs> and I want you to be fortified in the midst of your opposition. I want you to be fortified in spite of them persecuting you. Don't let fear get over on you, Timothy. Don't let fear get in your spirit. Don't let fear 
begin to choke your life. Don't let fear. I want you to be fortified. I want you to know that though you are young, don't let them despise your youth. You are young, but you are appointed and you are anointed for this. Now rise up and stir up your gifts and get back to your posts and get back to your assignment and know you can't leave. You must stay because you do not have a spirit of fear. I didn't give it to you. Your mother didn't give it to you. Your grandmother didn't give it to you. And God didn't give it to you. Now stir up your gifts. Get back to work. Good God Almighty. Woo! Glory to Abba Woo! Be fortified and not fearful. Somebody write that down. How do I respond to opposition? Fortified. I stir up my gifts. I don't operate in fear. I don't run from the. Some of you got a quitting demon. Woo, you got a quitting demon. You don't finish anything. You have a quitting spirit. Every time opposition comes, instead of you staying the course, instead of you conquering your fear, you run off the assignment. How many letters of resignation have you written? How many times will you run off of the assignment that God put you on? You, you are not. You are not supposed to leave your assignment. You are to be dismissed from the assignment when it is completed and now you go to elevation. How many of you quit before you completed your assignments? How many of you run off because you have gotten fearful? How many believers, I'm looking at the cathedral and I'm looking at us trying to come back from this pandemic and i'm just thinking wow this is the time you leave this is the time you run off this is the time you say god told you to leave that devil no you have not completed your assignment but you can't tell grown people nothing grown people do what they want to do just run off you haven't you haven't created succession you haven't, you haven't left anything for anybody to follow. We're literally having to rebuild everything. Watch this. Come on, Deidre. Wow, wow, why? Where are you running from? It's the spirit of fear. I don't know who else I'm talking to. I'm leaving confusion. No, you're scared. You're scared. That's the spirit of fear. I don't like confusion. I don't like when things are, I'm just leaving. I've been in this church. I've been in that church. I've been on that job. I've been on that job. And you have been running all your journey. And you have normalized it. You think it's normal for you to run. You think it's normal. You think it's all right for you to, 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 to take off. You think that's all right. No. That's the spirit of fear. And what? Paul was saying to Timothy is don't be fearful. I'm going to fortify you. You have the faith of your mother, the faith of your grandmother, and you have me laying hands on you. And so now you're going to let these people run you off your assignment. No, the devil is a lie. No, you're not. Because God has not given you the spirit of fear, Bishop. Ain't nobody told these people nothing except the spirit of fear. They are running all over everything. They're running here and running there. And, 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 and they're good until they get, 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 you know, till that spirit of fear run them again. They can't finish nothing. They can't produce nothing. They don't leave a plan of succession. They don't leave a track record of success. They don't leave fruit. They don't leave anything. They just running, just running, just running. Spirit of fear. It is the spirit of fear. And fear will run you off of your assignment. And Timothy, I will not let you run. You get still until the will of God has been revealed. How many of you have run off? You've aborted assignments. 
you run off and cheated yourself of promotion, cheated yourself of financial gain, cheated yourself of a good woman, cheated yourself of a good man, cheated yourself of a family. Fear of commitment. Fear of rejection. Just running, just running, running from church to church, running from job to job. Nothing. You just, you can't take nothing. I don't like confusion. I don't like, no, it's a spirit of fear that's oppressing you. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Just running. I see some of your feet just look like a runner. You always running. You run in your sleep. You run. You just running. Just running. You're not settled. You're not satisfied. And we need to call that demon out. That is the spirit of fear oppressing you. Oh God, shame, shame, fear, anxiety, trauma, and you've normalized it. Ooh, I don't like, I don't like talking in front of people. What? What? I don't, I don't, I don't do well when I talk in front of people. Oh, you talk to yourself. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do good when I, when I have to stand in front of people. Why not? The spirit of fear. And we have normalized it. We have normalized it. We don't even know. You're right, Pastor Lamont. We don't know who Timothy's mom, dad's was, but we know who his mama and grandmama was. Lois and Eunice had that baby tied down. Don't you fool yourself. I got Alan. Alan got his mama. He got his grandmama. Got his auntie. He, we got him locked down. He will have the faith of God in him. Some of y'all just running. Just running. Just afraid. Just afraid of your shadow. Just scared to go in your house. Scared of got bars and doors and dogs and lot. You're scared of everything. Scared of a woman. How's a man scared of a woman? How's a woman scared of a man? The spirit of fear. I want nobody to break my heart. I want what? <laughs> All of these are the things that the spirit of fear has us saying out of our mouth. And when we talk that talk of fear, we deny the power of the Holy Spirit to bring deliverance. Ooh, Rabbi Kashe. <laughs> Ooh, God, 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 God. Ooh, <laughs> Father, he's... Father, <laughs> Father, Father God, he is, he's talking to his children. Hallelujah. Oh, you end up by yourself. You end up alone. You die by yourself. You live alone. No, that's not God's best. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. In an emotion. Oh, Rabba Mamani Oshi and the Nanabahoshka. Oh, Rabba Mamani Oshan, the Nanabosa. May the Spirit of the Lord anoint our eyes today and anoint our ears today. To see and to hear where the cords of oppression are around us, binding us, tying us up so that we cannot thrive in the will of God. Today, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, bring discernment, bring clarity, bring revelation. 
and we thank you in Jesus' name. Oh, I declare over you that you will not self-medicate. I declare over you that you will not self-medicate. I declare over you that the spirit of fear is being broken off of your life. In the name of Jesus, break the cords of fear, anxiety, stress, overthinking, immobilization, isolation. We break the cords of labels over our lives. Fear, go now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rabakasha. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, I remember. I was so afraid. We went to Belize, and you'll see this story in my little book here. And we had paid for scuba diving and got out there on the boat and on life jackets. And the spirit of fear gripped me so hard. That everybody else got off the boat except me. I'm sitting in the boat by myself because the spirit of fear had gripped me. Everybody was out in the water, and it tur- I turned around and looked back, came back on the boat, came back on the boat. He recognized that I was afraid. I, we done paid $200 for this thing. Gil is out in the water swimming. And I'm sitting in the boat by myself. Sometimes we need to pay attention. And you sitting in the boat by yourself, something wrong, everybody else is out there. Sometimes we just need to pay attention. I was, I was terrified. I was immobile. He came back and he called Gil in and he put a rope around me. And put a rope around Vaughn. He said, now, just let him pull you. Put your head down. And open your eyes. And just take it in. Took me about 10 minutes. But that fear had me. But when that thing finally let me go. And I'm praying in tongues the whole time. I wouldn't even open my eyes. And I finally opened my eyes and saw the beauty. We were on a cruise one time and we had several couples with us and we were out on mopeds and one of them had had an accident. I said, I don't see them. We need to go back. And when we got back, a car had hit him and he was hurt really bad and was hemorrhaging. Pastor David Brown. And we got him back on the boat and I said, I'm going to my, my cabin. I'm going to bed. Gil said, no, you're not. We're going back out on these mopeds. I said, I can't do it. I can't. He said, if you don't do this now, fear will take over your life. If you don't get back on the moped today, right now, fear will take over your life. And I remember getting on the moped. I was terrified. And I don't know why. We didn't have an accident, but I was just shaking. And we rolled and we rolled until I stopped shaking. Little did I know that 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 spirit of fear would have taken over my whole life. I would not have been able to travel to the nations. I would have not been able to get on social media. I would not have been able to do anything because, see, fear has torn it. And fear won't stay where you put it. It won't just stay on that moped. It'll get all in every area of your life. Today, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to set at liberty those that are oppressed. I got to go. 
Woo, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you go. Oh, I got to go. My God, we're going to deal with it. We're going to drill down in it. We're going to get delivered. Delivered. And we're going to be free. Hallelujah. By the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I got to go. I love y'all. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah.